Welcome back. This is the Term 2 Mathematics Revision Set 3, Paper 1. Let's go through the answers now. If you are my student, please make sure you have attempted the questions first before watching this video. If you happen to just drop by, welcome. Uh, usually, I advise you to pause at the questions, try it out first before you attempt it. Let's start. Which number is in the 10,000s place? So, this is in the 1s place, 10s place, 100s place, 1000s place, 10,000s place. So, the digit 7 is in the 10,000s place. Next question. What is the mixed number represented by A? Now, mixed number is um, what you will describe something with a whole number and a fraction beside it. Now, you notice here there's a whole number 3, whole number 5. In between here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The 8 gaps, so this one should be 4, right? 3, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, this value here is the value of 1 whole. That's divided into 4 equal parts. Therefore, each of these must be 1 quarter. So this will be 3 and 1 quarter. 3 and 2 quarters, 3 and 3 quarters, 4 whole, 4 whole and 1 quarter, 4 whole, 2 quarters, 4 whole, 3 quarter and 5. So the answer for A will be 4 whole and 1 quarter. Now express 1 whole, 5 eighths as a decimal. Now 5 eighths also means 5 divided by 8. So you're not allowed to use calculator as you know. Right? 5 divided by 8. Uh, that means that let's do your long division. Times 7 cannot. Times 6, 48. Already I'm down to uh, this is out because this is 0. This is 5 because I set the first uh, digit in the tenth place, tenth place is six, huh? so I'm left with six and six. Eight times two, sixteen. Times five, forty. So my expressing this as a mixed number will be one whole point six two five. So answer will be number four. The diagram shows a packet of apple juice. Which of the following will be the height of the packet of apple juice? Height. So here, now this is a, the kind of question that talks about your number sense. It's like, uh, past year questions could be, what's the height of a table? What's the height of a chair? What's the height of a bus? Okay, so based on your understanding, so which of these makes sense? Now, for example, a person's height, let's say my height, okay, is about 1.7 meters or 170 cm. The height of a table, for example, is roughly 1 meter, roughly, or 100 cm. The length of my pen, this pen, is roughly 10 to 12 centimeter. So based on this understanding of measurements. You will know that 12 meters does not make sense. 5 meters does not make sense. Let it 12 cm and 5 cm. Now 5 cm is roughly this long. The length of maybe my finger. The packet drink should be long, taller than the length of your finger. Alright, so 12 cm will make more sense here. Answer here for number 4 is 3. Next line graph shows the number of durians sold from Monday to Friday. Now, you need to look at the numbers on the y-axis. And my students, you should know you are required to write down the numbers represented by each stage of this. So on Monday, this will be 80. Tuesday, this will be 40. Wednesday, this will be 140. 
Thursday, this is 180. Friday, this is 160. Writing this down helps you in your checking and it reduces errors. On which day was the number of durians sold twice as many as Monday? So what does it mean? Monday, 80 were sold. So what is twice of this? I times 2, 160. I need to look for the day that says 160 and that is Friday. So answer is 4. Question 6. The average mass of 10 apples is 0 0.103 kilograms. What is the total mass of all the 10 apples? Now average means that if you add up all the mass of the 10 apples and divide it by 10, you get this. Let's look at the formula. So average is your total uh, mass. In this case, it will be total mass. Average mass is total mass of the 10 apples divided by 10 because there are 10 apples here. Now, let's ask for total mass of the 10 apples. Now, the average mass has been given to you, 0 0.103. To find total mass, you use 0 0.103 multiplied by 10. And moving the decimal, right, you have 1.03 kilograms. So the answer will be 1. Sorry, I almost made a mistake. Do you, can you see my mistake? I almost got caught. This is grams. It's supposed to be kilograms. So sneaky. Okay. Next. The figure shows five roads drawn on a map on a square grid. Which road is perpendicular to road A? So now let's recap what's the meaning of perpendicular. Two lines that are perpendicular meet at right angle. Parallel means lines that do not meet. These will be parallel lines. These are this pair of lines are perpendicular to each other. Now road A is here. This is road A. So which road is perpendicular? It must meet at right angle, right? So this is the only one at right angle, and this will be road E. And so it's four. A reminder: if you are watching this, if you are my student, you ought to have finished your work first. And if you see mistakes in your work, please make sure you pause the video and take note of the corrections on your work in green pen. ABCD is a parallelogram. Find ADC. So you're supposed to find the value of this angle. Now the word parallelogram tells us these two are parallel lines. It tells us these two lines are also parallel to each other. It tells us also that opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. So if you can find out what is this angle, I know what is this. How to find this angle? Well, let's use what we know. If I cover this, you'll see a triangle. And know the sum of the angle in a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So let's sum up these two angles first. Okay, I'll add here 69 plus 43. I'll have 112. So I use 180 minus 112. I have 68 degrees. So this angle is 68 degrees. So the opposite angle of a parallelogram a parallelogram are, are equal to each other. The opposite angles are equal. So 68 here, that's the answer. 68. For this kind of question, just need to make sure we are careful. Notice they give two answers that are very close to each other. That means that they are seeing if we are careless or not. So let me just check. Huh? 43, 69. I add up this 3. Yes, I get 1, 1, 2. 80 minus 12 is 68. Alright. Good job. Praising myself. Next one. In the figure, A, E, C and D, E, B are straight lines. Very important. A, B equals to B, C equals C, D. A, B equals to B, C equals to C, D. Now, and they have even kindly given us this, what I call toothpicks. Huh? And this tells me now that this triangle is an isosceles triangle. Now, angle AED is 110, CDE is 30. Find ABE. ABE is this angle. Alright, now, how can we find out what is the value of this angle? 
Um, well, okay, we now see two parallel, two isosceles triangle. And the other isosceles triangle is here. This is the other one. So if that's the case, if this is an isosceles triangle, as you can see, right? Pair of pair, these two lines are equal. If this is 30 degrees, therefore this angle must also be 30 degrees. Correct? Now, this is 110. Where is angle on a straight line? I can find out this angle is 70 degrees. 180 minus 110 is 70. I can also find out what is this angle. Vertically opposite angles are the same. This is 110 degrees. Now because I now know these two angles, I can find out what is... Sorry, that's for the joking. I can find out what is this. I use some of the angles in a triangle. So 180 minus 110 minus 30. I know this angle is... 40 degrees. Now why do I want this angle? Because if this is 40, I know this angle is also 40. Remember, this is an isosceles triangle. Why do I want to find this? Now, see I, I keep covering the parts that I don't need, so I don't get confused. Look at this triangle now. I'm supposed to find this red color angle, right? I know that this plus this plus this is 180. So I just need to minus away these two. So 180 minus 40 minus 70. Yeah, I get the answer 70 degrees. So the answer is 70 degrees and that is number 1. Look at question 12 now. The table shows the number of pages of a book Ali read over 4 days. So... I know he read 40 on Monday, 32 on Tuesday, 6 on Thursday. I'm not sure how many he read on Wednesday. If two-fifths of the book was read on Monday, how many pages did he read on Wednesday? Let's look at Monday. So if you draw a model and divide the number of pages into five parts, and they tell us that two-fifths was read on Monday, so one-fifth, two-fifths, and that is 40. That means I can find out what is one part. One part is just 20, right? 20 and 20. So every part here is just 20. So after Monday, there are 60 pages left. Not read. After Tuesday, minus 32, I'm left with 28 pages. Minus away Thursdays, I'm left with 22 pages. So 22 pages here were read on Wednesday. Answer is number 2, 22, on Thursday. At a school fair, the ratio of the number of adults to the number of children was 2 is to 3. So adult to children is 2 is to 3. An adult ticket cost $13 and a child ticket cost $6. What was the ratio of the amount of money collected from the adults to the amount of money collected from the children? Alright. So, this is number of adults. This is the cost of the adult tickets. Okay? So, assume that, let's say there are two adults. So, two adults will need to pay how much? Two adults, uh, for adults, right? Two adults, each one will pay $13. So, you'll pay $26. For children, there are, let's say there are three children in one group of these two adults and three children. So three children, each one pays six dollars, that will be eighteen dollars. So if I had to rewrite the ratio according to cost of the tickets. So adult tickets versus children's tickets. So adults will have paid twenty-six dollars and children will have paid eighteen dollars. Let's simplify this. I divide it by two, I will get thirteen. Divide by two, I'll get nine. So this is the ratio and this is the answer. For question 13, answer is 4. Tim had some red and blue colored papers. He used an equal number of red and blue papers for his art project. Then he has two-thirds of red and three-fifths of blue papers left. What fraction of the colored papers did he use? Now, the clue here comes from the equal 
number of red and blue papers were used. And having left, let's talk about before, before and after. Before there were some red, some blue. After also some red, some blue. He used the same number, okay, and then then he had two thirds of red left. Red, uh, two thirds. If two thirds was left, that means that okay, observe how the model is drawn. Uh. That means this must be the one third that was used. And this was a two third of the red. Okay, now and then three fifth of the blue colored papers were left. If three fifth were left, that means that blue, right? That means that two fifth must have been used. Two fifth were used, and three fifth were left. One, two. Three. Now you can see that one part of red here is equal to two parts of blue. So if I were to cut further, I can now count the number of equal units at first. So at first, blue, there were five parts. Then after using parts on the blue, there were three fifth left. At first, there were one, two, three parts here of red. After using left, two. What fraction of colored papers did he use? So fraction now will be used over total. How many parts were used? One, two, three, four. What's the total number at first? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And this is the answer. Number three. The main part is how to draw the model to solve this question. Last one for part section A. Claire has some money to buy some pens. If she buys 37 pens, she will need another $7.60. If she buys 39 pens, she will have $6.80 left. How much money does Claire have? So, these are, we are making her assumption. Huh? So, she has some money, but she's not enough to buy all the things that she wants. Okay? So, how shall we do this? So if she would buy 37, that means that she will spend all her money, but not enough. She will still need this that she didn't have. $7.60 that she doesn't have. So she's short of the money that she needs. If she buys 29, she buys 29. If, uh, which she didn't buy really, uh, if she buys 29, she would have enough money to buy 29. And she will still have some money left. How much left? 680 left. Take note, huh? So this one will be 29 pence. And this will be 37 pence. Now, if you look up here, what is the value in this empty unit here? If the same as this, right? Six dollars and eighty cent. In other words, if I look at just this portion, this is actually six eighty plus seven sixty, and that will be fourteen dollars and forty cent. Now, what's the usefulness of this value here? The usefulness is to know that here is actually represented by 37 minus 29. That will be 8. 8 what? 8 pence. So 8 pence actually costs $14.40. Let's find out how much it will cost her to buy 1 pen. To buy 1 pen will be 14.40 divided by 8. Very simple, just do some uh, long division. 
So one pen costs one dollar and eighty cents. To buy twenty nine pens, decimal. Don't forget the decimal. She will need to spend fifty two dollars and twenty cents to buy twenty nine pens. In other words, here. This part of the model will be $52.20. So how much does Claire have at first? That will be what she needs to spend on 29 pence plus the money she has left. That will be $52.20 plus $6.80. $59.20. So for question 15, a lot of steps, model will draw, a lot of work, but you will finally get at this answer. Do you get it right? If you have, good job. Now take a break and then you come back for the next video to look at section B.